Welcome to this adventure of Wassel Science as we check out some of those amazing creatures created by God Almighty. We're talking silverback gorillas. Yeah, terrestrial gorillas of Africa. Let's check them out. Let's go. The silverbacks are ground-dwelling apes that love to inhabit areas like this and are mostly herbivores eating plant material. Did you know gorillas make nests? Yeah, not quite like the robin up in the tree there, but they do make nests out of branches that they use for daytime or nighttime use. The nests are usually simple groupings of branches and leaves, and they can be about two to five feet. Pretty amazing. That's about the diameter that their nests will be. And they're constructed by individual gorillas. The genus Gorilla is actually divided up into two subspecies. The Eastern Gorillas and the Western Gorillas, but unfortunately both are critically endangered. And they are not some distant relative of humans. Zero evidence for that, although that's become the talk around town. <laughs> Zero evidence. God created each of these species unique in his creative power. The natural habitat of gorillas covers not a very big area there in Africa. However, elevation-wise, very large, very different. You've got the mountain gorillas that are gonna inhabit areas of the mountain all the way up to about 7,000, all the way to 14,000 feet. And you've got the lowland gorillas that'll be down in the dense marshlands and some of those dense forests at around sea level. Just incredible elevation that these gorillas can inhabit. Most of the time, gorillas are gonna move around by walking on their knuckles. However, for short distances, they'll sometimes go bipedal, which is on their two feet. Oftentimes, that's when they're carrying food or in a defensive situation. How big do the gorillas get? Well, check this out. Wild male gorillas can weigh in at about 400 pounds, while the adult females are usually half that in around 200 pounds. And the adult male's wingspan, or how far it can reach its arms, they don't have wings, but how far they can reach their arms, can be about eight feet. God created the anatomy of the gorilla very different than any other animal or very different than humans. We are not animals and there's zero evidence for us ever having evolved from animals, but we were specifically created by God. But the facial features of the gorilla is described as being mandibular prognathism, which means the mandible actually extends out further than the maxilla, which would be the upper part of the mouth.
unfortunately, so many zoos and places that house animals fall into this lie. This has been around since at least the 80s when I was a kid, and probably before that. How many students and families have been blinded by similar fingerprints? God is the creator of all of those. Zero evidence. Similarities among created kinds doesn't show evolution, but instead a common designer who created all things. The fact that no phylogenetic tree exists is testament to the fact that God is on the throne and he created everything fully formed on the days of creation. Saying there's a phylogenetic tree because of similarities where one thing evolved into another is like saying a bicycle evolved into a car. It's ridiculous. Eastern gorillas are going to have a darker color than the western gorillas. But as far as coloration goes, we actually find the mountain gorillas to have the darkest hair of them all. If you were to look at the day schedule for the gorilla, it's gonna be broken up a couple different ways. First off, there's gonna be a divided time for resting. Maybe that's in their nest on the ground, which is different than chimps or baboons, where they like to nest on the ground in those two to five foot uh, branch piles. or they have feeding periods. So it's either resting or feeding. Their diets differ also between species. Mountain gorillas are mostly foragers for foliage, for plant material, leaves, stems, shoots, and fruit make up their diet. Check this out. Did you know that gorillas usually don't need to get water to drink? They will, but they don't have to often because of the succulent plants that they're eating and the morning dew. They get the water that they need. How amazing God provided for these creatures. A group of gorillas is called a troop, and it's often led by one silverback. That's gonna be a male of about 12 years old, and it gets its name from that hair coloration on its back, silverback. How cool.
so what happens when a gorilla is angry? Well, really, they go through this ritual of about nine steps. The first is it's gonna start hooting at whatever it's upset at. Number two is there's gonna be a symbolic feeding. Number three, we see the entire rise of bipedal where they're walking on both feet. Then throwing vegetation comes in fourth Number five, chest beating with those cupped hands. Number six, we get a one leg kick, like get out of the way, I'm upset. Number seven, we have sideways running and a two legged or could be four legged on those knuckles. And number eight, slapping and tearing up vegetation. And finally, number nine, thumping the ground with their palms to end the display that hey, this is what I'm doing. Gorillas in the wild are gonna live to be about 35 to 40 years old, although in captivity, they've been known to live over 50 years. Woohoo! What a great adventure here on Wassel Science, learning all about the silverbacks and getting to hang out with those amazing creatures designed by God Almighty. Again, they're not some distant relative. They're not part of some phylogenetic tree. God created them specifically as he's created you and me. Just amazing. God is so incredible. And we praise him with our breath. Thanks for joining us on this adventure of Wassel Science. We'll see you guys next time, wherever we're at, always exploring God's incredible creation. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Gorillas are terrestrial, ground-dwelling apes, and they're found in parts of Africa. And they're mostly herbaceous, which means, herbaceous? That ain't right. Retry.